Welcome to NFL Imperialism on Madden 09. Here I have a map of every NFL team representing the area that they are located. I'll spin a wheel that will randomly select one team and an arrow that will point which way that team will attack. If the arrow lands on another team, they have to play each other and the winner takes all of the loser's land along with one player of that team's choice. If the arrow lands on a state without a team, they'll just take the land and we'll move on. And we're going to do this until there's only one team left standing. I want to give a huge shout out to Dean's World for coming up with this concept. Go check out his own NFL imperialism videos and give a sub to his channel while you're at it. Also, I know that the Chiefs don't play in Kansas, but the Rams are also in St. Louis here, so I just figured I'd give them each their own state. And as you see, down in New Mexico, I also included the Albuquerque Vipers from my Madden 07 franchise with mostly a generic roster, but I did give them both quarterback Orlando Cross and receiver Charles Phillips. And without further ado, NFL imperialism begins now. So who is this going to land on first? We got, is that my Green Bay Packers? Yes, it is. And they're going to be going to the right. I think it's going to send them to Detroit. Indeed, it does. So our very first game is going to be Packers at Lions. And if you're wondering why I chose Madden 09 of all the games, it's because it was the first Madden that had Super Sim. And doing this in any other older game was going to take like 10 times longer. And remember, this is the year 2008, the year the Lions didn't win a single game while the Packers are led by an unproven proven Aaron Rodgers and we could very well be starting off with a huge upset in this one. Lions are currently up by seven. Green Bay used their first time out here. Now this to make it a 10 point game. Detroit's got it. Huge third down for Green Bay. They only have one timeout left. They need to score on this drive and they're going to need an onside kick after that. Rodgers to the left side. He's got Jennings for a first, but they got to hurry this up. Faced with another third down here. Quick throw from Rodgers into some traffic incomplete. This would be the nail in the coffin for the Lions here. Can they get the win? They send a heat. Rodgers is intercepted for a third time today. And your Detroit Lions are going to start off this video by pulling off a massive upset. And with the Lions win, we're going to give them the highest rated player on the Packers, Aaron Kateman, to give them a real good pass rush. So now we're going to go over here to Wisconsin. We're going to pick that Detroit blue. And Wisconsin is now going to be all blue after that massive upset by the Lions. What a start for them in a year where they didn't even win a game in real life. All right, who's going to be next up after a massive upset? We're going to get the Albuquerque Vipers. All right. Getting into my own custom team early, and this has them going down south. There's nothing down there, though. Well, actually... They got the Dallas Cowboys there, so that's going to be their first matchup. And as you can see down on midfield, the Vipers are rocking these alternate all-black uniforms that I made for them, especially for this video. The Vipers up by 14 with just about three minutes left to play. They just need to pick up a couple first downs to put this game away. And they're not going to get the third down conversion here. Dallas is going to get the football back with two minutes left. Romo looking to throw again. He's got time and a first down, but they need more than just 10 or even 20 yards at a time. They need touchdowns. Third down here for Dallas. The Vipers pass commit. Romo going one-on-one -on -one for T.O. He goes up and he's got it inside of the red zone. Cowboys have to hurry this up. A minute left to go in the game. Romo doesn't spike it. He's going to throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas Cowboys. They pull within one score. Time for the onside kick attempt. Even if the Cowboys don't get it, they do have all three timeouts and they're going to need to use them. Crucial third down here for the Dallas Cowboys and they get the stop. They hold, but the Vipers are in field goal range. This is going to be a 46-yard attempt to make it a two-score game. Kick is up and good. Well, I would give the Vipers probably Terrell Owens or Demarcus Ware, but the way this is set up, they are an exported team from a franchise, and to be able to do that would be a massive pain. So unfortunately, the Vipers are going to be withheld the boosts that other teams are going to get. But they are going to be taking half of Texas here away from the Dallas Cowboys, splitting it now with the Houston Texans. So here's what the map looks like after two games. All right, who's going to be up next? Spinning the wheel, and we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. Which way are they going to be going? To the right and to the east, the northeast there. And I'd say that's going to give them the Cleveland Browns. 
So the battle for Ohio. We're all knotted up at 10 apiece here. Cleveland trying to get into field goal range. They're going to pick up that first down there with under two minutes left to go. Things are looking the Browns way. Converting on third down here would be huge for the Browns. They're going to run it, get some positive yardage. Nowhere near the first down marker though. Dawson from 49 yards out. His kick is up and it looks like it is good. Browns have the late lead. Oh, and Cincinnati's down to their number three quarterback. It looks like Palmer got hurt early and then Fitzpatrick out for the game as well so it's down to Jeff Rowe to lead the comeback. Rowe needs to put together some big plays here like out pressure coming he's gonna fire that one and it should have been picked. Third down Rowe he's got a clean pocket throws that one to the right side it's gonna be caught by Ocho Cinco shy of the sticks and inbounds they gotta hurry things up now it's fourth and four the clock continues to tick. Rowe in the shotgun he's gonna quickly take the snap he's got time throwing this one to the right side airing it out deep incomplete pass the Browns win the battle of Ohio. So with that win, the Browns are going to be getting Ocho Cinco on their team. And now the entire state of Ohio belongs to them. Time to spin the wheel again. And this time we've got, is that the Eagles? Yes, it is. Where is Philadelphia going to attack? Are they going to try to take their entire state? No, they're going to go down south. And it's a real close call here between the Jets and the Ravens. Um, I don't know. Let's take another look at that. That is really close. I'm going to give it to the Jets, though. I'm going to say it's Eagles at the Jets. All right, with less than two minutes left to go, the Jets currently hold on to a four-point lead. Philadelphia does have all three timeouts. And at first, I was like, well, if the Jets win this game, that's going to be quite the upset. But then you got to remember, they got cover boy Brett Favre on the team, and that is a huge boost for the Jets. If the Eagles can hold on this third down, they're going to have a chance in this game. It's going to be third and eight. Favre hands this one off, and shot of the sticks fourth down in inches and the Jets can get this down to about 20 seconds left and probably make this a seven point game with a field goal this is going to be a 38 yard attempt for Mike Nugent his kick is up and good can Philadelphia get a big return here it's going to be a squib by Nugent right past the return man it's still on the ground he finally picks it up spins out of a tackle there Deshaun Jackson he's had a few walk-off touchdowns in this stadium before nothing there though you got to think that McNabb has to be looking to Sean Jackson's way with no timeouts. They need to get this in one, two plays max. Airing this one out deep to the right, and it's going to be caught. Tackled in bounds, though, down at the 40. Philadelphia needs to hurry this up. Maybe they can get one more playoff. McNabb is ready. His offensive line isn't, though. Three, two, one. He spikes it. No, he doesn't. It's a fake spike, and he's going to throw that one into the flat. Buck Holter is taken down, and the Jets hold. And Brian Westbrook is the newest member of the New York Jets. So now New York getting a ton of land here. Obviously, they just have half of New Jersey, so getting this half of Pennsylvania is huge for them. And back to our wonderful friend here, The Wheel, who's going to give up? Us. is that going to be the Denver Broncos up next Denver's a little bit isolated they could attack or they could just go get some land they're going to go southwest and I would say Southwest there takes them to the Arizona Cardinals. Well, it all comes down to this for Arizona. Fourth down and 10 on their own 46. In what has been a weird game, Denver leads 18 to 12. Cardinals need a touchdown on this drive. They do have all their timeouts, even if they don't get it, though. Liner's going to float that one over the middle, and it's going to be caught in heavy traffic. Holy cow, what a grab there, and what a dot by Liner over the middle, keeping Arizona's hopes alive. Hurrying up to the line of scrimmage now, ship to his left. Liner at the left, he fires that one to the left side. And that should have been a touchdown for Anquan Bolden. Just float that out there to him. Don't throw a bullet. liner has been all right for Arizona so far today. 8 for 18 on third down, though. Firing that one to the left side. Wide open. Anquan Bolden down inside of the 10. Goal to go, Arizona. The clock continues to tick now as we hurry back up to the line. Liner to the end zone. Touchdown, Larry Fitzgerald. The extra point's going to give him the lead. Denver looking for a big kickoff here. And oh, what a mistake by Arizona. It goes out of bounds. The Broncos are going to start this drive on their own 40-yard line. Well, Denver's offense with some favorable field position. They just need to get into field goal range. 
and I don't know what happened to Jay Keller. I know he was quarterbacking them earlier in this game. Maybe I need to change the injury sliders. I feel like there have been a lot of injuries, but still, huge throw by that. I want to say it's Va Bradley Vad Pelt over the middle. I could be wrong, but that's a huge gain there to get them into Cardinals territory, probably about 10 yards outside of field goal range. Looking to throw again, floating this one over the middle, broken up. No, that's actually Patrick Ramsey back there quarterbacking as Cutler didn't suffer a serious injury, but he's going to be out for this game. Ramsey's got to get them into field goal range. He takes the snap, and he's going to be brought down on the play by the face mask, though. What a mistake by Arizona. What was a huge play for them now sets up Denver in field goal range. Well, maybe not quite. They're going to be down to the 39-yard line. They probably want 5 to 10 more yards, and they're going to get it there with Ramsey's pass. Second down and one as Denver uses their first timeout. Look out. Ramsey lets this one fly. It's going to be caught down at the one. Timeout Broncos. All right, it should all come down to this Matt Prater field goal from 20 yards out, and he's going to split the uprights. Denver with the two-point lead with six seconds remaining. Matt Leinart led them on a huge drive last time he was out here. He needs to have a one-play touchdown now. Hail Mary. Leinart, quick throw to the left side, and it's going to be broken up. Denver holds on for the victory. So now Larry Fitzgerald is a member of the Denver Broncos. Time to turn that sea of red into a sea of orange. Denver with a huge win. And now the map's going to look kind of weird because they're kind of not connected, and they kind of are at the same time. Back to the wheel to give us our next team. And it looks like, is that going to be the Oakland Raiders or the Seahawks? It's the Raiders. Are they going to try to take Southern California there? No, they're going to go to the north. We're just going to give them Oregon up here. I know I made it gray, but when I made this black, it messes up with the borders. And so if someone ever takes the Raiders, which I don't think they're going to win, it could cause some problems with the border that I don't want to deal with right now. That was our first territory grab. First time we haven't seen a battle. Back to the wheel we go now. And it's the Kansas City Chiefs. They also have potential to grab some land, but they also could go to war if they wanted to. And just like that, we're going to be seeing the Denver Broncos again. But first, with all the injuries we've been seeing, I'm just going to turn injuries off. I know it's a big part of the game and whatnot, but a lot of players have been missing a lot of time early on. Less than two minutes to go in this one, and Denver's trying to hold on for a win. They currently have the seven-point lead on the Chiefs, who use a timeout right there. Going five wide on second down. It's a designed quarterback run for Jake. Cutler, and he got the first down. That might do it for this one. They're going to run this one to the left side, and he's going to get brought down just shy of the end zone. The Chiefs got to use their last time out. And that's going to bring out victory formation now for the Denver Broncos as they win back-to-back -back games. And now to go along with Larry Fitzgerald, Jay Cutler can throw it up to Tony G. Denver just keeps taking all these red states, turning them orange. First Arizona, now Kansas City. Denver's on a roll right now. Will we get another team here, though? We've got, is that the Baltimore Ravens up next? Yes, it is. They're in a weird spot over on the East Coast over there. And this has them going southwest. And I think that's just going to give them Virginia right over here. And now it's back to the wheel. Who is it going to give us this time? Is that my Albuquerque Vipers again? Yes, it is. They went on the attack last time. They're doing the same here. And they're going to try to take all of Texas now. And things aren't looking good for Albuquerque. Fourth and 21. They're down by 14. And choosing to punt with just over two minutes left to play in the game, really trusting the defense. I feel like if the Texans won this game, it would definitely be an upset. Amon Green in the backfield. This Albuquerque defense needs to make a stand. And the former Green Bay Packer has a first down. As you can see in that top left corner there, Houston's been a lot more balanced on offense today than the Vipers have as Amon Green continues to thrash the Vipers, pick up another first down. Victory formation here for the Houston Texans as they take down the Albuquerque Vipers, who was likely a fan favorite going into this one. I know I was rooting for them. So it is with a heavy heart that I replace the Viper Green with the Houston Texan Red. But just like how Albuquerque couldn't get any players from the Cowboys when they beat them, Houston's not going to be getting any Vipers on their squad. Back to the wheel we go, and it's going to give us... I think that's the Tennessee Titans. And which way are the Tennessee Titans going to be going? Southeast. 
Ooh, that is really close there between the Panthers and the Falcons. You could really go either way. I think it hits that tip of North Carolina right there, though. Uh, you could say Atlanta as well, but I'm going to give them the Panthers. Once upon a time, Vince Young led a huge game-winning drive. I think that was back in 2008. This is also in 2008, and he needs another game-winning drive right here against the Carolina Panthers. Under two minutes to go, down by five. That first pass there is only going to pick up one yard as they hurry up back to the line of scrimmage. Young throwing that one to the left side. It's going to be caught at midfield, spinning out of tackles. And Carolina finally brings him down in their territory as Tennessee continues to go hurry up. CJ 2K to his right. Young takes the snap, testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Intercepted on the play. Carolina may have just won it. Tennessee now praying for a defensive stop. They do have all three timeouts, but they can't give up a first down. And Jonathan Stewart. It's one of the best running backs in the league right now as he takes his carry to the left side. He's got some blocking and almost a first down. These Tennessee Tickle Monsters can't give up another inch if they want to survive, but they do. Jonathan Stewart puts the game on ice. The Panthers now have a beast in the middle of their defensive line, Albert Hainsworth, before he signed with the Redskins. Tennessee is going to be changed to this other shade of blue as Carolina gets a huge win. And here's a quick update of the whole map Houston with the most room but there's also a ton of teams that haven't done anything yet let's see if one of those teams get their first turn now as we spin the wheel again and it looks like it. it's the defending Super Bowl champion New York Giants are they going to try to take the rest of New York from Brett Favre and company no not that way man that is tough to figure out but I think it is touching the tip of lower New York here we're going to get Giants Bills Fourth down and 14 now for the Bills. Last chances are down by 10. It's making me play as the New York Giants for this play at least. I'm not going to be doing anything though. Just watching what the CPU does as Buffalo stays alive down to midfield. Beast mode to the left of Trent Edwards for second down and 10. He takes the snap. He's going to throw trying to get that to Lynch. He's going to be picked off and New York puts the bow on top of this win. There weren't a ton of great players on the Bills to give the Giants, but Terrence McGee is now their top corner back. So now New York is going to become a slightly different shade of blue as the Giants get a lot more room to operate and have a potential for a Super Bowl rematch against the Patriots now. Who does the almighty wheel choose next? Is that going to be the Minnesota Vikings or the Miami Dolphins? Goes with Miami who stuck all the way down in South Florida. So even though the arrow is pointing down, there's only one way Miami can go and that is up. So we're going to pit them against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Late in the fourth quarter here and Jeff Garcia's Buccaneers currently have a seven point lead and face a third down and four. If they get this, they should win the game. Garcia wants to throw for it. Going to that left side. It's going to be incomplete. Jarred loose at the last second and that stops the clock so Miami's not going to have to use a timeout. They are in field goal range for Matt Bryant though. He's already two for two today with a long of 43. This one's going to be from 48 yards out and his kick is good. So how far can Chad Pennington take these Dolphins downfield? Can he lead them on it wouldn't be a game winning or even a game time drive but a game make it closer drive no he's going to be picked off at midfield Tampa Bay puts the game on ice and with that victory the great Jason Taylor is now a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense and Miami unable to get out of South Florida while Tampa Bay expands uh downwards for uh, what that's worth all right who's next up to bat here it is going to be another Florida team the Jacksonville Jaguars do they try to take all of Florida? Do they go north? Nope, they're going to go south. And the only team that's really below them is the Bucks. Five minutes left in the fourth quarter here, and Jacksonville's looking to go up by two scores. Actually, three scores. They're currently up by nine. It's a wacky 15 to six score as that run up the middle picks up a few yards for them. Here's a third down and five. It's a toss to MJD, taking it to the left side. And I thought he was going to get in the end zone there. Instead, Tampa Bay holds him short. This kick here to make it a 12-point game. Kick is up and good. Victory formation here for the Jaguars who own all of Florida. And how about Jason Taylor plays for every team in Florida? So let's go ahead and make Florida this nice Jacksonville kind of yellowish color, I guess. 
And who's going to be up next? Are we going to get somebody new? It looks like it. No, we're actually not. The Giants are up again. And which way are they going to be going? Do they want a Super Bowl rematch? Uh, that's down south there. And right below the Giants are the Jets. We've got the Battle of New York on our hands. We're going to pick up here with 2.30 left to go in the fourth quarter, where the Giants look to go up by two possessions. It's going to be first down and goal, but from outside of the 10 after a penalty on the Giants. Here's a run. Bradshaw up the middle is down inside of the five. This is a huge third down for the Jets' defense, and they give up an easy touchdown to the Giants. They might have just won this game on that run. New York out to kick this one away, obviously, to New York. I guess that doesn't really work in this game. It's going to be returned from the five-yard line now. Taking this one to the left side. He's got some good blocking. Oh, my goodness. Are the Jets going to do it? The 40, the 30, one-man giving chase. This is going to be a kick return touchdown for the Jets. Wow! They're going to get right back into this game on a huge return. And Eric Mangini sends Brett Favre and the offense onto the field for the extra point. Going for two makes it a three-point game if they get it. It's going to be a play fake. Favre's got a man wide open in the flat. It's going to be caught. The Jets are only down by a field goal. This Giants offense has only converted 33% of their third downs today. Do they get one here? No, not quite. Bradshaw stops shy. The Jets are going they have a shot. All Brett Favre needs is a field goal to have our first overtime game in the video. Can he set the Jets up there? He's going to take the snap, fire that one to the left side. Oh, I thought that may have been intercepted for a second there. That would have been the most Brett Favre thing ever to throw a late pick is Wow, he has been very inefficient today. 8 of 23 for only 53 yards. Looking for his first touchdown on this drive as he spikes it on first down. Second down and 10 from the 40. Favre has time steps up, gets hit as he lets this one fly. Testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Picked off, and the Giants are going to hang on. Brandon Jacobs is a good running back for the Giants, but 10 overalls better than him is Brian Westbrook, who switches teams for the second time today. As the Giants turn the gang green into the big blue. Slowly but surely, the teams are getting bigger on this wheel. Who's up next? Oh, it's the Patriots coming off of a near-perfect season. Are they going to get revenge on the Giants? They might. Well, actually, looking at the arrow here... It's kind of going northwest, and I think that's going to give them, I think that's Vermont. It's Vermont or New Hampshire right there. So I think they avoid a rematch with the Giants. So now the Patriots just look like a big L in that upper right-hand corner. All right, we're going to get back to the wheel here, spin it again. And is that the Panthers once again? I think it is. They already beat Tennessee earlier, looking to conquer more land up north. And that's going to put them against the Baltimore Ravens. Carolina still in it late in the fourth quarter here. A buck 32 left on the clock. All three timeouts. They need a touchdown there. And they're, and they're going to start this drive on their own five-yard line. DeLome pump fakes. Fires this one downfield. And it's going to be caught at the 30-yard line. Nope. It popped out at the last second there. Fourth and 10 from their own five-yard line. DeLome in shotgun. He's got his running back to his left. He's going to take the snap. It's going to be a play fake. DeLome over the middle. It's going to be caught, but well shy of the sticks. Kirk Cousins moment right there as the Ravens look to hold on. A touchdown here from Joe Flacco and company would really put the game away. Going to the ground game, taken down almost immediately. What a goal line stand there by Carolina, holding the Ravens to just three points, keeping the game within reach. Jake DeLome needs to lead this Carolina offense downfield into the end zone in just under a minute now. He's under center. He's going to take the snap, throwing that one to the right side and right off the hands of his receiver. So instead of a big play there, it's third and 10. DeLome, play fake, under some pressure, thrown over the middle. It's going to be caught, and that's going to pick up the first down. Carolina better hurry up. Will DeLome spike it on this play? No, he fakes it. Looking to throw. He's got time. He's going the distance here. I think he's got a step on him and incomplete. Once again, facing fourth down, and they've got to have it. DeLome, pressure in his face, gets this pass off into traffic. Incomplete pass. Baltimore holds on. Well, I'm going to give the Ravens Steve Smith, but in order for them to be able to have him on their team, they got to get rid of somebody such as Mason, so I guess they're getting an upgrade at receiver. So now Baltimore has this just really odd-looking piece of land that like slowly stretches more and more west. All right, let's see who's up next. 
The wheel has selected, I think that's the Minnesota Vikings, nope, the Indianapolis Colts. It's about time that Peyton Manning got himself a shot at this one. He's going to go east. And that's going to put him against the Cleveland Browns. Well, what did you really expect? It's Peyton Manning going against the Cleveland Browns, unable to add to their lead on this play, but they will kick for three. Vinatieri to add the cherry on top here as the Colts dominate. And the Colts sure up their offensive line now with Joe Thomas. It's about time one of these super teams really got to show what they can do. We landed on the Patriots once, but all they did was pick up some land. And now Peyton Manning shows everybody that he's still got it. Still a handful of teams that have yet to ha have anything happen to them yet. One of them being the Pittsburgh Steelers, who we're not going to hear from right now. I really thought that was going to land on them. Instead, we see the Texans for the second time. And they're going to go up north and just take Oklahoma. So back to the wheel we go. Maybe we'll get the Steelers this time. Nope, we're going to be getting Drew Brees and the Saints. Which way are they going to go? They can't be going down south, yet the arrow wants them to. Just the ocean underneath them there, so we're going to spin this one again, and they're going west. Northwest to be exact, which means, once again, the Houston Texans are involved. The Saints currently have the lead in the fourth quarter, and if they pick up this third down here, that would be huge for them. Drew Brees is under center. He's going to give this one to his fullback, who stopped shy of the sticks. That brings out Martin Gramatica. He's two of three for kicking today. This will give the Saints a two-score lead in the I formation here, but they're going to need some big plays as Schaub motions green out to the right. He's dropping back to throws. The Saints send a little bit of heat testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage caught by green downfield into Saints territory already. Daniels in motion on second down. Schaub wants to throw it again. He's got time airing this one out to the left and it's going to be caught inside of the red zone. What a snag. It's going to be another pass play for Houston. Schaub has time. Pump fakes. Throws that one to the corner. Intercepted on the play. I thought he had Andre Johnson for a sure touchdown. Instead, the Saints lock up their victory. So the Saints going from just having this small little piece of Louisiana here to all of this. And along with all that land, they also get Mario Williams. The map is really starting to form now as you're seeing some big chunks of blue, gold, and purple, but there's also a lot of teams that haven't gone yet. Will we get another new team on this spin? Let's see as we get the Oakland Raiders who have been landed on once, but all they got was Oregon. Are they going to, to attack someone this time? I think that's San Francisco. Indeed it is. We got the Battle of the Bay. Just two of the worst teams in the league going against each other, and it really looks like it. Both led by first overall pick quarterbacks who never lived up to the hype. How about Frank Gore, though? He's one of the few good players you're going to see in this game here as he's nearing the century mark today. The Niners are just 2 of 14 on third down. Surely they can get it on third and inches, especially with the inconvenient truth back there. Or maybe not, as he gets bottled up and the Raiders keep their hopes alive. All right, Jamarcus Russell, what can you do? We know he's got a big arm, so if they need a big play, maybe he could give it to him or throw the game ceiling interception. Well, I guess somebody had to win that game. And there wasn't much on the Raiders to give the Niners outside of Namdi Asamoah. All right, that was nice to see a couple of new teams face off. Can we get any more here how about the other team from California, the Chargers? I know it says Los Angeles Chargers, but just pretend it says San Diego. And it looks like once again, we're going to be seeing the Niners. Wow, I was not expecting this game to be this close with nine seconds left to go. The Niners looking for the upset, and they may just force overtime. Alex Smith with a dot over the middle. The Niners get the ball to start off overtime, but they face an early third down. Play fake. Smith firing that one, and it's going to be intercepted. The Chargers are going to have great field position. Heck, they might already be in field goal range. And they're not going to risk the ball anymore. 29-yard game-winning attempt here. Chargers to win it. Kick is up, and it is good. The Chargers win the first overtime game today. Man, for a second there, I really thought the Niners were going to pull off the upset. Instead, the Chargers have almost all of the West Coast and Patrick Willis. That game was a lot better than I expected. What does the wheel have in store for us next? It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. And there's really only one team that they can play. Unless they want to completely avoid them and take Alabama. Which, I mean, if that's what you want, then uh, go for it, I guess. Alright, haven't seen any land claimed in a while, so I guess that was nice to see 
as the Detroit Lions are up for the first time since the very first move. And it didn't even land on him. Green Bay was just getting very aggressive and lost. And oh boy, this is going to be tough. They're playing the Colts. Well, Lions, just like in real life, it was fun while it lasted. And that's two dominant wins by the Colts now. They might be the team to beat. And I know the Colts are already stacked at wide receiver, but how are you not going to give Peyton Manning Megatron? And back to the wheel we go. Who's up next? For the first time, let's just pretend it says the St. Louis Rams. And where are they going to be going? There's a lot of places they can go. They're going to go north. And that's right up to the Chicago Bears. Oh, intercepted. Oh, wow. He's going to take this the distance at the last second. I was not expecting that. I was not prepared to commentate. Wow. The Rams add on to their lead with a late pick six. They may not be the greatest show on turf anymore, but they're getting the job done here. All right. So with that, the Rams expand their territory into Illinois. And we're going to give the Rams Brian Urlacher. All right, who is going to be up next? The wheel is going to select the New Orleans Saints. Last time we saw them, they took a ton of land from the Houston Texans, and they're going to be going up north. And going from their logo here, they're just going to take Arkansas. The Saints really starting to dominate the South here. Of course, you got the Colts up north. I think they might be the favorite to win it. And then the Chargers on the West Coast. We're starting to see some dominance here. Back to the wheel we go, and next up, is it going to be the Jaguars? Yes, it is. Haven't seen this team in a while. They could be taking on the Atlanta Falcons. They're not going to be going down south, though. They are, there's nothing down there. This has them going to the west. And they're going to continue to avoid the Falcons as they expand into Mississippi. Back-to-back -back times, we just see taking of land. No real battles going on here. And now we see the Denver Broncos again. The way they've been playing right now, I think they're kind of a dangerous team. And they're going to take on the New Orleans Saints. Whoever wins this is going to be getting a ton of land. And this has just been a weird game so far. Each team has gotten a safety. That's the Saints' only score. Denver's going to bring out Matt Pradar here for a field goal to extend this lead that they've got. And the Saints really disappoint here as that's possible score Agami 15 to 2. I really thought the Saints were going to put up more than two points for all this land. Instead, Denver by far has the most now. And even though he didn't have a great game, we're still going to give the Broncos Drew Brees. Things are really starting to come together now on the map and still a few teams that haven't done anything. Maybe the Jaguars will finally face the Falcons. Seems like they're maybe scared of a rookie Matt Ryan there, but now they're finally going to have to face them. And maybe they had a reason to be afraid of them as the Falcons are going to take this one. Matt Ryan didn't even start that game for some reason, but it didn't seem to matter. And how about we pair up Jason Taylor with John Abraham? How about that by the Falcons not doing anything until pretty late here and getting a bunch of land, and it looks like we're going to see him again. Finally, the wheel lands on them, and where are they going to be going? Looks like they're just going to be taking South Carolina. So the Falcons out of nowhere taking a lot of land all of a sudden, and now we're going to see the Chargers again. Do they go up north and maybe try to take the rest of the West Coast? No, this has them going down south, and they're going to be playing the Broncos. And Denver might be unstoppable, especially after this game. And with just 15 seconds left, they've pretty much won this game. And as if they weren't overpowered enough, now they have 99 overall Landanian Tomlinson. And with all the wins and players that Denver's getting, they might now be the favorite to take it all. I mean, look at how much of America they've got right now. Can anyone compete with the dominant Denver Broncos? Well, looks like they're up next. Do they just expand their territory up north, or are they going to go fight someone? There's no one down south for them, so we're just going to respin again, and there's no one going that way. Well, I guess that does hit the corner of Utah there, so we're just going to give it to them. Probably a few teams breathing a sigh of relief that they don't have to play the Broncos now. And next up are the Atlanta Falcons. Where did they go? They're 1-0 so far today, and this is going to take them up north to play the Baltimore Ravens. This time, I made sure Matt Ryan was starting for the Falcons, and maybe that was a mistake. Joe Flacco wins the battle of the rookie quarterbacks, showing everybody that one day he can be elite. I wanted to give the Ravens Jason Taylor, but again, we ran into some cap issues, so they're going to get John Abraham instead. I guess it is kind of nice, though, that we're not seeing Jason Taylor on yet another team today, as for the first time, we're going to be seeing the Minnesota Vikings. Finally, we're going to see them make a move. They haven't done anything yet, and their first game is going to be a tough one against the Colts. Well, all three games now that the Colts have played in, they have absolutely dominated. 
and they're looking to just pour it on here in Minnesota with a late field goal. If there's anyone who's going to take down the super team in Denver, I think it's going to be the Colts. They already had a great team to begin with, and now they got Adrian Peterson. There's still one more pretty overpowered team that we haven't seen yet, and we're still not going to see him. Of course, I'm referring to the Patriots coming off a nearly undefeated season. Instead, the Colts just take Kentucky, which now connects them to the Ravens. We still have yet to see the Patriots, Steelers, and Redskins and the Seahawks until now. The only team they can play are the Broncos, so they're probably trying to avoid them. Nothing up north, so we got to respin that. And that is down south there. And they're going to be taking on the Broncos. And things are really starting to come together for Denver now. They got a 10-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Nice catch made over the middle, though, there for Seattle. Seahawks trying to pull off a late comeback here. Down to the goal line. They need a touchdown. They're not going to get it here. So instead of trying to get a touchdown here, they're going to get the field goal that they need. Orlando Mare out to attempt the onside kick. And Denver's got it going back their way. This is a massive third down for the Seahawks defense, and they've got the stop. So instead of punting it away, the Broncos are going to try a 55-yard field goal to give them the two-possession lead. Matt Prater's kick is up, and good! What a kick by Matt Prater after the Seahawks defense got the stop and everything. One of the Broncos' biggest needs was inside linebacker, and they fill that now with Tadupu. If I'm saying that right, I'm probably not. I mean, look how overpowered the Broncos are. They got LT, Champ Bailey, who was already there, Tony Gonzalez. They got Tapupu there, as I butcher his name. You got Larry Fitzgerald, Drew Brees. Who's stopping them? Only eight teams remain now as we spin the wheel, and for the first time, we get the Washington Redskins. There's really only one team they can play, though, just based off of their location, and that, of course, is the Baltimore Ravens. Last time we saw the Ravens, they were looking pretty dominant, and they're looking to lock up another win here against the Redskins, who still have a chance late. 18 seconds left to go, and again, the Redskins need a big play. He's going for it here, intercepted, and that is going to be your ball game. So now the Ravens get this little little clump here to uh, not have that just little awkward space that they had where the Redskins were. And we're going to give the Ravens London Fletcher to give them one of the best linebacking trios ever. Back to the wheel we go. Who's going to be up next? It's the Ravens again. Now, who do they try to take on? They pretty much have to go out west. That is not west. They can't really go out to the ocean. They're going to go down southwest. And I think if you kind of follow that, I don't think it hits West Virginia, but eventually it hits all the way down here in Louisiana, which is, of course, owned by Denver. The Ravens are giving a valiant effort here against the Broncos, but they need a stop. This is a huge third down, and they're just going to go victory formation. Denver's going to bleed this clock down pretty much as far as they can and trust their defense to win this one. Can Joe Flacco launch this one deep? He's done it before in real life against Denver, but he's nearly picked there. Seven seconds left on the clock. You got to think he's going to be going deep to Steve Smith. Flacco pump fakes and lets this one fly, showing off that deep arm. Triple zeros on the clock. Incomplete pass. The Denver Broncos hold on and continue their dominance. And now their land stretches from coast to coast. Look at all this that Denver has. The only team they can't play right now are the Patriots. Of course, there were a lot of great players they could have taken from the Ravens, but how about give them one of the greatest safeties ever, pair him up with John Lynch. Man, Denver just continues to get better, and there's only six teams left, and I think we're going to be seeing the Rams here. They only have their one game against the Bears, but they look pretty dominant in it. And of course... We're going to be seeing the Denver Broncos yet again. Dude, if the Rams of all teams beat the Broncos, I don't even know what I would say. They've currently got a three-point lead on the Broncos, who are looking for the go-ahead touchdown here. Second down and goal, and they still don't give it to LT. Breeze to the back of the end zone, incomplete. I mean, I guess I understand throwing it to Tony G in the end zone here, but you have one of the greatest running backs of all time in the backfield. Just give it to him, and I think he's going to score for you. They do here, and... I guess not. We know that Matt Prater has ice in his veins. We saw it against the Seahawks, and here he ties it up. How content are the Rams with taking this to overtime? Did they try to win this in regulation? Bolger throws it. He's going to be intercepted. And Reed, who was just added to the team, pick six. Unbelievable. 
Wow, the Rams played it aggressive, and now they're going to probably pay for it here with a loss. Well, now the Rams have to play this aggressively. They have all three timeouts. They can use the entire field. Bolger airs this one out deep, incomplete. And the Rams have yet to convert on third down today. They absolutely need this one here. Bolger's going to send his tight end in motion, takes the snap, fires that one, and he's going to be caught downfield. Timeout Rams. Four seconds left. Final play of the game. Bulger goes deep, knocked away, and there's actually still one second left. John Lynch making some huge plays downfield there. He had a couple pass breakups on this drive, and he might need another one here. This will be the last play. Bulger over the middle. He just dumps that one off. What are you doing? Your season's on the line, and you throw a check down. So the Broncos survive a scare there for a while. I thought the Rams might actually pull it off. Instead, Denver now has well over half of the U.S., and now Denver has Orlando Pace. But I mean, that really goes to show it is still any given Sunday, even with how dominant these teams are. And we're finally going to see the New England Patriots. Will they do anything? No, it looks like they're content with just taking, I think that's Rhode Island there. Man, just watch the Patriots come out of nowhere and beat the Broncos in their only game. Like, if they only play in the last game and win, I, I mean, I guess that's a strategy you can use. But now we're going to get the match we've all been waiting for Colts versus Broncos and even the Colts who have looked dominant this entire video don't stand a chance against the Broncos yeah I thought the Colts would maybe be the one team that could really stop Denver uh, but I mean Denver just had their way with them of course there were a handful of players we could have given the Broncos we could have got Peyton Manning who's a few overall higher than Drew Brees but I feel like defensive end was a little bit more of a need and then there were four, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are the only team it hasn't landed on yet, and that continues. Denver just continuing to look dominant here. Uh, there's nothing they can get out west, really. Actually, I lied. That's going to give them Nevada, which doesn't really do them any good, but I guess it gets rid of this awkward space here between them and California. Will we finally get the Pittsburgh Steelers? Nope. Once again, it's the Denver Broncos. Will they just try to grab more land here? That's nothing that they can really take. They already have all the land down south. Again, the wheel keeps trying to put them down south. Is there anything there? No, I mean, they literally have everything south of Nebraska. Once again, spinning the wheel and you cannot go down south. Man, this wheel... It really wants them to go south. How about northeast? Make it everything south of Iowa now as they grab Nebraska. So back to the wheel we go. One of these times, it's got to land on the Steelers, right? At least it didn't land on the Broncos this time. Where are the Giants going? It looks like they're just going to avoid New England here and grab Connecticut. So after seeing a lot of head-to-head -head teams out here just grabbing land right now, you gotta be kidding me. I bet you they're probably gonna go up north and try to take Wyoming because you, you can't go south. Come on, man. You, there's nothing out west that they can grab. You basically gotta grab land at this point. That's really all they can do unless they get an arrow that points them specifically towards the Steelers. Come on, just give us the Steelers or the Patriots. Finally, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. They could grab West Virginia or go play New York. And Pittsburgh may have just drawn the short straw here. They had no time to really go out and improve their team, grab any other players. And the Giants are going to win this one handily, 26 to 10. And remember, you can never count Eli Manning's Giants out. I mean, this is right after the season. They won the Super Bowl that no one thought they could win. And giving them Troy Polamalu is going to give them a little bit of a better shot at making an improbable run. And then there were three, just three. Three teams left, and we're going to get the New York Giants again. They can pretty much play either the Broncos or the Patriots. That arrow points them towards Canada, which is not a viable playing ground. And directly down south there is that Connecticut, or maybe that's Delaware. I don't know, and I'm not going to check right now either, but they get a little bit of land. One of these three teams is going to walk away champions of all of the United States of America, and next up are the Patriots. All they've done so far is grab some land, but now they're going to get a Super Bowl rematch against the Giants. And the winner of this game is going to take on the Denver Broncos. Third down and five. Manning's going to be going for it all here. Oh my gosh, what a catch. Touchdown, New York. They take the go-ahead lead. What a way to take the lead. Lead there Manning testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Asante Samuel. Mari Toomer 
It goes from his left hand to his right hand there, but regardless, what a catch. The Giants are going to go for two here to make it a three-point game, and they've got it. Tom Brady has a little bit under a minute and a half in all three timeouts to work with here. Third down here for the Patriots. Brady in the gun. He's going to air this one out to the right side. It's going to be out of bounds. Will the Patriots even win a game? It's fourth down and seven here. You got to remember, this is the first game they've played all video long. Brady looking to throw. Great pocket there. He's going to get that one off. Incomplete pass. But the Giants aren't out of the woods yet. The Patriots still have all three timeouts to get a stop here on defense. Here's a nice run, though, near the sticks. This is a crucial third down here for Eli Manning. If they can pick it up, they're going to walk away with another huge upset against the Patriots. They're going to run the ball, and he's got it! So with that, we're going to give the Giants this little piece here of New England. Not that it really matters, though. And going into their championship game against the Broncos, Eli Manning's got himself a new favorite target. Here we go. One final spin of the wheel. Whoever it lands on will not be getting home field advantage. So for the final game, the Denver Broncos have to travel to the Big Apple to play Eli Manning and the New York Giants. And it looks like we've got a defensive slugfest on our hands here in the fourth quarter until Manning goes deep there. Great catch by Toomer. This game has seen a lot of field goals, only one touchdown for each team here, but Westbrook is looking to change that. Under three minutes left to play, Fullback dive, and the Giants take the lead. Drew Brees and the Broncos have plenty of time to work with here. They just need a field goal to tie it up, and they're probably looking to get a touchdown. Nice run here by LT. Neither team looks like they've been very good on third down today. It's third and three now for the Broncos. LT in the backfield. He's going to get the ball. He's got some solid blocking. His moves pick up the first. Inside of two minutes here, and Brees is going to be going five wide. Third down. Over the middle, it's going to be caught, and backing into a first down is Stokely. Offset eye here, but the Broncos are looking to throw for it. Breeze is picked. What a play there by Sam Madison, potentially winning this game for New York. It's not over yet, though. The Giants need to pick up a first down because the Broncos have all their timeouts. If they can get a stop, they'll get the ball back. Denver stacking the box. Handoff to Westbrook. He's got himself a first down. The Giants continuing the run plays and pick up first downs. And that's going to be all she wrote. Denver all out of timeouts. Victory formation here for Eli Manning. And against all the odds, the New York Giants defeat the super team Denver Broncos. What a game. I would have thought if any team would take down the Broncos, it probably would have been the Colts. But they won that game handily. But of course, it had to be Eli Manning. And with that victory, all of this orange that stretches from coast to coast becomes blue. What a victory there by the Giants. I am still in shock. All the way down here in New York, they started off with half of New Jersey. And when you scroll out, you can barely even see them on the map, but they conquered all of it. And with that, the New York Giants are your champions of Madden 09 imperialism. Make sure you go check out the NFL imperialism videos on Dean's World channel as well. He's got some great content over there. I highly recommend subscribing to him. If you enjoyed this video, leaving a like is always appreciated. If you're new here, subscribing also very much appreciated, of course. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey.